Welcome to Math 240, Applied Statistics. We're talking about regression, correlation, Module 6 topics. So first off, when we, w so far in this course we've only looked at a single, uh, a single set of variables, or in the case of, um, in the case of paired sampling, we did have samples from two different populations, but it was the same parameter that we were or the same uh, characteristic that we were measuring in both populations. Now let's say we have one population and we're going to be measuring two different characteristics from that population in our sample. So say we are looking at a bunch of houses and comparing their square footage with the cost. Um, we want to come up with what is, is there some sort of linear relationship? A linear relationship between the two variables is what we call a correlation. Uh, correlations, uh, we say they're either positive if when the x variable increases, the y variable tends to increase. That's a negative correlation if when the x variable increases, the y variable tends to decrease. And there would be no correlation if uh, there doesn't seem to be any effect on the y variable, whether the x variable is large or small. So that's what we mean by positive negative. And the, the tighter it is to the line, we would say that's stronger, and the more of a scattery shape, the, the weaker the correlation. So the correlation of two variables can be quantified with a statistic called a correlation coefficient. And we use the letter R to um, stand for the correlation coefficient. If we were talking about the true correlation in the population, we would use the Greek letter rho, R-H-O, um, to rep so that's the, like the population parameter, whereas R is our estimate of rho from our sample data. Uh, a, a correlation coefficient is a number between negative one and one. A negative one would be a perfect negative correlation, a perfectly strong negative correlation, and one would be a, a perfectly strong positive correlation and if it was zero that means there's no correlation. Uh, the sample size, how, how big of a sample you're picking, determines how strong your correlation needs to be for you to determine it to be um, significant and not, not likely due to just random chance of sampling. So for example if we had a sample size of eight eight pairs of x, y uh, coordinates, I guess, eight pairs of x and y, we would need the absolute value of r to be greater than 0 0.707 for us to claim that there is a significant, uh, statistically significant correlation. Um, so if it was greater than 0 0.707 or if it was less than negative 0.707, Either of those would be fine, and we would say there is a significant correlation coefficient. Um, so what we can do with this, as you probably have guessed, uh, as you, you can plot these points, uh, as I've done here with this house data that I made up, and you can, uh, you can get this so-called fitted line. So if you remember from algebra, a linear equation has an intercept and a slope. So the intercept value plus a slope times x. And so this red line represents what we call the least squares regression line. Um, and you can use software to, to get the least squares regression line. In StatCrunch, it's very easy to do. And in my next video, you'll see exactly how to do that. But you can see this equation. I'm saying y hat. This is my estimate of y is equal to this slope plus, or sorry, this intercept plus the slope times x. So for any x value I throw into the equation, I'm going to estimate the point uh, that's going to be, that would be, I would say, like the average value of y from, I would, um, there's, of course, there's some variability to this. All of these points don't lie on the line, but on average, they would, their, their average values, so to speak, should lie along the line. Uh, so that's why I say y hat, my estimate of y. Now, as I said, there is variability, and this variability is measured by what we call residuals. So the difference between 
the actual y value from the data and the predicted y value, that is to say the point on the line that's directly above or below it, that difference is called the residual. So we take the actual minus the predicted, that is residual. So if it's, if the point, if this blue point is above the red line, we're gonna have a positive residual. If it's below the red line, we'll have a negative residual. Um, and so that's the difference, that's how, so if it's if it's above the line, that, me that means that point is above average for, for this model. And if it's below the red line, it would be below average. Um, now, all of these residuals are important numbers. If we were to take these numbers, these residuals, and square them all, you know, raise them to the power two or, or multiply them each by themselves, square them, and then add up all of those squares, we get what's called the sum of the squares of the errors or the sum of the squares of the residuals. Sometimes it's called SSE, sometimes it's called SSR, um, but anyway, that sum of squares of residuals, um, when, we, when we talk about a least squares regression line, uh, the least squares regression line is the one line that is going to minimize the sum of the squares of residuals. If you can imagine, you could draw a line going a lot of different ways through this data, but the the one line that's going to um, minimize the least the the sum of the squares of residuals is given by the by the by the the math. Like the the software is going to give you the least squares regression line. So anyway, um, we can use the least squares regression line equation to predict for new data. So if you go back to our data, you recall that um, uh, we had houses that uh, had anywhere between 1,000 square feet and 2,100 square feet, and that's the range of our X data. And so we should be able to use this regression line to predict for any, val for any square footage what would be the, the cost of the house on average. Um, so you just plug in the number, say for a 1,500 square foot house, you just plug in 1,500 in for X, and you just work out the math, and that's gonna be your, um, your answer. So in this case, you work it out, um, you plug in 1,500, and you get $294,037. So that would be the average price of a 1,500 square foot house, according to this model. Uh, you should remember that you should only use the linear regression model if you've determined that the correlation is significant, right? Remember, if that correlation coefficient wasn't significant, you shouldn't be using a linear regression uh, line for predictions. What you should do instead is just average your y values and forget about x. Uh, you'll see an example of that in just a second. Uh, the other thing you should be careful of is you shouldn't use values of x that are outside the range of our data that was used to generate this. So if I, um, if you go back to the data, you'll see the minimum square footage was 1,000 and the maximum was 2,100. So if I had a 2,500 square foot house, I shouldn't use this linear equ uh, equation to estimate the cost of the house because that 2,500 square footage, that's beyond the scope of the data. So I don't have any assurance that the model is gonna be any useful at all for a 2,500 square foot house, all right? So don't predict for X values outside the data range used that was used to create the model. Um, now for this regression line, we can have an interpretation of the slope and the intercept. For the slope, this 332.559, we interpret that as for every one unit increase in the x variable, that's how much on average we expect the y variable to change. So in this case, for one square foot increase in the house size, we would expect the average cost to raise by $332.56. The intercept is... Uh, only it well the way to interpret it is if you had an x variable of zero, um, then that would be the how the the value the, on average of y. In some cases this makes sense. In some cases it doesn't. In this case it doesn't. You can never have a zero square foot house. Having a house that costs negative two hundred and four thousand because it 
is has zero square footage doesn't make any sense at all. So this is not always interpretable, but in some cases it is. Um, if it is, then that's the meaning of the intercept. It's what is the prediction of y when the x value is zero. So as I said before, if you determined that the correlation coefficient is not significant, um, let's just suppose that was the case um, for this data. So suppose we, we have you know, a sample size of six and we found a correlation coefficient and it was determined not to be significant. Uh, that's not actually true here, but let's uh, suppose it is. If we wanted to estimate the, the cost of a 1,500 square foot house, we just average the house costs from our data set and we use that as our estimate. So we just average, we just a, uh, do a, a sample average, a sample mean. And that's going to be our, our estimate. That would be our best estimate for any square footage of house if the linear relationship is not significant. That's what we do. It's boring, but it's true. That's what we do. And I know you'll have some homework problems that are like this, so just remember. Um, okay, so next we want to talk a little bit about residuals and the, the, the plot. So if you were to plot the residual values against the x value, you'll get what we call a residual plot. Um, this can be very easily done in StatCrunch, uh, and the way you interpret a residual plot is important. So a residual plot, in order for some of the, the theory behind linear regression to be valid for a certain data set, you really want your residual plot to have no particular pattern to it. You don't want to have um, a curve shape. You don't want to have um, the, the, the spread, like the variability, the variance, to be increasing for different values of x. And you also, um, if you have outlier points that are just points that are rather far from the rest of the cloud of residuals, that's an indication that something um, is awry or maybe is awry. So these are the thi the three major things you want to look for. If um, if any of these are the case, then you would say that a linear model may not be appropriate. So if there's a shape like a curve, if there's a spread like a trumpet shape or a triangle, or if there's a few points of residual points that are really far from the rest, you call them outlier residuals. Those are those are kind of red flags. 